Good morning, Facebook Live. This is Robin Kirby Gade. Welcome to today. It is a most awesome day. It is. And if it hasn't begun a most awesome day for you, well, you know what? It's going to begin now in Jesus' name. And so as you join, on, join in, hey, Amy, God bless you. Thank you for joining in. It is going to be so awesome. Hey, Sue Gailey. You know, this is the week of Passover and resurrection, and I am beyond excited. And I can just feel in my members, oh, the resurrection of Christ Jesus. You know, it just reminds me of the power of our inheritance as it talks about it in Ephesians 1, 18 and 19 about our inheritance that the way, the power, the strength, which wrought Jesus Christ from the dead and seated him at the right hand of the Father, that that strength is our inheritance. And so we have to appropriate it. And so faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. That is faith when you cannot see it you still believe it within your members. I posted today, and I know, I know I've said it a lot of times, about John Archibald Wheeler, the physicist, who turned physics upside down, telling all of science that information is where matter and energy come from. And I talk about this in Mindfulness, Mind of Christ, in Genesis 1 where God sent the information. What information did he send? Y'all know it. Tell me it. Let there be what? God said, let there be what? Be light. And when God sent that information out, what happened? There was matter. There was energy. There was light. It cannot be emphasized enough, especially in this hour. You know, God told me yesterday, oh my goodness, it's like I could not stop hearing God. I remember, let me just tell you this. This is so funny before I get into what I was going to share with you. You know, I was invited to a prophetic round table with a ministry that I was ordained under probably 2007. And I got out from under them in 2008, 2008, 2009 because there was an unclean spirit in their midst and I did not want to be ordained under them. So I'm ordained under someone else right now. And so they had a prophetic round table and they invited all the prophets, the big names of the area in the state of Alabama. People were invited and they were the prophets, okay? Let me just show you how awesome our God is, okay? Reality comes from information, okay? Information is what creates matter and energy. And so they said, all right, I want y'all to write, we're gonna have an hour, and I want you to write what you hear the Lord saying. And so they said, okay, let's just start. Well, I had ledger paper, a yellow ledger paper, notepad and I could not stop writing. I could not stop writing. I was just writing so fast and I went to the restroom just to, to wash, you know, like wash my face in person, wash my hands and just take a breath and go, God, give me a break. Hold on. Let me get my breath. You know, it's kind of like swimming in a deep place and you're overwhelmed in a God way of Psalm 42, seven, we're roaring deep, cries out to roaring deep at the breaking forth of God's water spouts. And you just are so overwhelmed in a God way. Like if you went snorkeling for the first time or scuba diving for the first time, and you saw the beauty of all of that stuff while you're under water, and you would just be like, let me come up for air. It's so much stimulus. It's so much amazingness. Like I've got to slow my person down because I can only take in so much glory. 
And so that's what it was like at this meeting in 2008 that I was invited to, and I was the rookie on the block, so to speak, and I don't know how I got invited. Oh well, but I was invited. And so I took pages of notes from the Lord about what he had for this hour. And so we came back to this prophetic round table and everybody else, they were going around each other and they were sharing what the Lord gave them. And it was only like a sentence or a paragraph. And I'm like, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? How much do you want God's information? How much do you want him to speak to your person, right? And so I began to share my information and they kept interrupting. And I would say, I'm sorry, I'm not finished yet. I've got notes, pages of what the Lord's told me. And they would stop me consistently. One person stopped me and he said, Robin, are you telling me that you got this while you're here? Like in other words, I guess they thought that I wrote it beforehand. <laughs> you know, I guess, I mean, I don't know what they were thinking, but he kept stopping me and he kept asking me, he kept saying, Robin, did you get this here? And by the way, I'm at a crosswalk. I've looked both ways and it's a red light for this side. I'm walking around because there is a fire truck. God be with them in Jesus name. They probably responded to a emergency call. God, we speak peace in Jesus name. And so they kept stopping me and saying, Robin, did you get all of this here? Did you get all this here? Hey, Donna, I love you. And I said, yes. I got all this here. I said, I had to leave and go to the restroom to just look myself in the mirror, to wash my person and to just breathe. And I asked God, please stop telling me so much. I can't write, but so much God. But my point is, is that God speaks. And yesterday was one of those days. He would just keep talking to me, Robin, tell my people this, tell my people this, tell my people this. And I'm like, God, I'm being overloaded in such a God way that I don't know if I can stand it. And you know what? That's what Jesus told the disciples. They said to Jesus when they needed help in their unbelief and they were overwhelmed and he said, eat of my flesh and drink of my blood. He lost a lot of disciples that day. He lost a lot of people that were followers and not Christ lovers. Their love wasn't real. It never evolved. And so it was shown that day as persecution came against Jesus Christ when he said, eat of my flesh and drink of my blood. And so the disciples, and I just picture Peter, I just picture him, okay? And you know, this time of Passover is so perfect to bring this up. So I can just picture Peter just, you know, like stepping back going, what did he say? Did he say eat my flesh and drink my blood? You know, because the Pharisees were just tearing their garments, but they could not get the revelation of the Old Testament scripture that says the life of the creatures in the blood. And so that communion of what Jesus Christ was gonna do on the cross was brought to bear in Revelation as he was speaking that from Isaiah. And so as a result of the offense to their natural mind, Peter, I can just, you know, again, see him stepping back going, what did he say? Eat my flesh, drink my blood. And then I can just picture Jesus looking at them and say, and he, you know, asked them, is this a scandal? Is this too much for you to bear? Then what will you do when I ascend before your eyes into the heavens? And that he wanted to tell them more, but they could not bear it. They could not handle it. Their mind and their heart weren't prepared. They were so in the knowledge of the mind and their body's intellect of the senses to the spirit of the Lord by the power of the Lord to the kingdom of heaven had not been known to a great measure. And so it was difficult for them to bear. And you know what? That is the reality today is that so many people are in their head and they say, I can't hear God. I want to hear him. And they keep saying all these things, but it's because they're in the intellect of the mind. 
And that is always folly. It doesn't understand the word. It is only the body that is open to truth and the power of truth in its members as Holy Spirit brings revelation as Holy Spirit brings resurrection power where the word is not dead but it's alive it's alive that is what it's like in your members when the spirit of truth comes upon you to unveil the word it's not just words on a page that were written way back when it's words that are alive and are operative and so that is our information and that information changes everything. And so yesterday, God kept telling me. And I mean, it's just like I could not. It was just the same thing, exact thing. Like at that prophetic round table, I was like going, God, you're speaking too much. You know, that is a good problem to have. To where you're not able to scribe as fast as what you're hearing and you know god was telling me he said robin people are saying that this area has a funk in it and i'm in a funk and i kept hearing that and when we think of that funk it's where we're the finality that we're under now is without knowledge that's a good acronym for funk the finality that we're under now is without knowledge knowledge of what truth the information of truth listen the enemy wants nothing more than to be, for you to believe that you're in a funk do you think god's gonna tap you on the shoulder and speak to your members and say you're in a funk this area is in a funk no that is not in god's vocabulary okay what god would be saying is oh thou of unbelief of little faith that's what he would be saying okay and so there's some of you that are joining on today that you need the information of truth the word to have resurrection power we are in resurrection week we are in Passover week and let me tell you what you can expect and hope for God to come through in your midst in your circumstances so what are you believing for today what are you hoping for? Are your actions in line with that hope? What does that mean? Are you doing what's necessary for your part? Are you lining up with truth? Have you cleansed your hands and let the coal of the word of truth purge iniquity from your lips? What are your actions? What are you thinking about others? What are you thinking about others? What are you speaking? Saints, that's your part. So line up with truth. If necessary, do whatever means is uh, applicable according to your particular care under physician if you need to fast, but definitely pray. And again, I cannot emphasize that God keeps telling me a lot of people's prayers are hindered and I'm going to be unfolding it more in the forbidden fruit the spiritual disease so many so many people's prayers are hindered because of their fruit because of the unbelief in the way that they feel about others and the way that they think about others no matter what saints love believes the best so bless your enemies pray for them and watch what you speak about other people. God bless you. I love you. Have a most awesome day.